it's very difficult now for us to understand what the bay used to look like, uh, say, by 1850. We now think of the bay as that there's a kind of a, a very stark difference between the shoreline and the water. But there was a huge intermediary zone of um, freshwater marshes, saltwater marshes, mudflats. Diking the bay off increased the amount of grasslands further towards the bay. That is, we exchanged tidal marsh for grasslands or for salt pond in some cases. But in any case, we sort of moved the terrestrial world further into the bay. In 1851, Congress transferred ownership of swamplands and all tidelands to the states. By 1855, California began selling the tidelands of San Francisco Bay for a dollar an acre. The way in which American law was developed, promoted that, was something called the um, Swampland Act, which actually, in effect, encouraged people to fill and to what they called reclaim, which of course wasn't reclaiming, it was claiming. And uh, the way in which private enterprises could gain control of land that was covered over by the bay. By the 20th century, 137,000 acres of baylands, lands between high and low tide, were cut off from tidal influence, dramatically shrinking the bay's overall size. In the South Bay, thousands of acres of marsh were diked off to create evaporation ponds for crystallizing salt as early as 1854. The habitat was dominated by tidal salt marsh in historic times. And since about the 1850s, about 85% of that has been lost. There was an opportunity here with the gold miners when they saw the Ohlone Indians extracting salt uh, from natural salt pans around the edge of the bay um, to actually commercialize it. That pretty much started the whole solar salt industry here in the South Bay. By 1868, 18 separate salt production enterprises were in operation. This plant here was actually constructed during the mid-20s and went into production in the early 30s. The bay water will travel through, and each year it, it fills up in salinity. It takes time for it to evaporate down to get to this point where it will drop the good salt crystals. Salt has been produced out here due to a lot of climate, evaporation. The soils are fairly impermeable as well. The operators take control not to dig the mud that's below the salt. Then that salt is then hauled into a wash facility where the salt goes through a wash with a saturated brine before it is then stacked onto our, our stacking site. Today, the organisms living within these salt ponds give the southern end of San Francisco Bay a surreal multicolored hue 